Today, I'm going to talk about a topic that seems to cause a lot of confusion to people who are new to this concept of land value taxes. See, you might not know, but several famous economists and politicians have long advocated for a system with higher land value taxes and a reduction in all other taxes. This could be Milton Friedman and Winston Churchill, just to name a few of the proponents of land value taxes. And something that people often ask about this kind of tax system is, how would farmers be able to survive under such a system because they require a lot of land to sustain their business, so wouldn't they go out of business because we increase the prices on land so much? Well, so in this video, I'm going to describe exactly how such a system would affect farmers. So to begin with, I'm going to talk about how urban land and rural land are valued differently. Then I'm going to talk about whether or not the increases in land value taxes will be even out by the fact that we are reducing all the other taxes. And then finally, I'm going to talk about something very surprising. And that is that in the end, it is not actually even the farmers who are going to be carrying the extra tax burden that comes with an increase in land value taxes. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's jump right into it. The first question that probably comes to your mind is how would farmers be able to afford such a tax? Farmers, they need so much land just to be able to sustain their business. So if we increase the prices on land, how would they be able to afford this? Well, the thing is that farmers, they always have their farms in rural areas. And rural areas are valued very differently from urban areas. See, there's a cliche among real estate experts, and it is that the three most important factors in determining the desirability of a property, that is location, location, and location. Now, and what I mean with this is that, although it's a simplification, Location means so much more than size of a property. See, just to put some real numbers uh, on this, according to the US Agricultural Department, the average price of one acre of land is around $3,000. Compare that to a very desirable location like Manhattan. Here, the price of just one square feet is $1,000 and I'll save you all the trouble of doing the conversion of acres to square feet. It basically means that when we compare these two numbers, the prices in Manhattan are more than 10,000 times as expensive as rural areas. Again, although this is a simplification and although Manhattan, yes, is a very, very desirable and very expensive location, the point is still that it is so much more expensive. So location usually means a lot more than size. So of course farmers will have to pay a higher price for their land when we increase land value taxes. However, the proposal was not just to increase land value taxes, it was also to reduce all the other taxes. And so yes, one expense might increase, but uh, when we're decreasing property tax and when we're decreasing value-added tax, there are a lot of other expenses that are going down as well. In particular, keep in mind that when we reduce income tax, then farmers will also be able to keep a larger part of their profit. So some people, they see land value tax as a punishment towards farmers and as a punishment towards someone who needs a lot of land to sustain their business. But uh, I would actually see it in the very opposite way, especially when we focus on income tax, because the more productive you are, the bigger a profit you are able to generate. Well, the more you're being rewarded, the more you're actually able to keep this profit when we have a system with a low income tax. So in the beginning of this video, I said that it is not actually even the farmers who will carry the extra tax burden of land value taxes. And this might come as a surprise to you, but um, if you saw our previous video, in that video, we talked about the reason why landlords cannot force land value taxes onto the tenants. And although that topic doesn't really seem to have anything to do with farmers, it is actually the very same economic principles that are the reason why farmers 
will not carry the extra tax burden of land value taxes. So let me dive into this and explain the reason. So in this scenario, we are looking at an economic transaction between a farmer wanting to sell food and a hungry family needing to buy food. So what if we add land value taxes into the equation? Who will carry the extra burden of this tax and what will happen to the price of food? Will it be the farmer who's going to carry the extra tax burden? Will it be the hungry family or will they both carry part of the tax? Well, as we talked about in our last video, when you have land value taxes and you have a landlord renting out a piece of land to a tenant, then it is the landlord who is carrying the entire burden of the tax. And it is because the landlord is the most inelastic part in this transaction. Now, and this maybe doesn't seem to have anything to do with farmers and hungry family, but the underlying economics are the same. I don't want to go too much into detail with what inelasticity is, because we just talked about it in the previous video. So instead, if you're curious, then I suggest you go watch that video where we go more into details with the economics. However, in this scenario, with the farmer and with the hungry family, it is the hungry family who is the inelastic part because it is very easy for the farmer to adjust the supply of food, but it is not easy for the hungry family to adjust the need for food. They need a certain amount of calories in order to avoid starvation. And so, because the hungry family is the inelastic part, that also means that they will carry the majority of the entire tax burden that comes with an increase in land value taxes. So again, land value taxes might not be that big of a deal to farmers after all. So it's probably fair to say that uh, we have simplified things quite a bit. One other very important factor in determining how land value taxes affect local farmers, that's the neighboring countries. It's their tax system, it's the fertility of their land, and also whether or not it's cheap or expensive to import from these countries. See, it really is an entire video topic in itself, because that can quickly get very complicated. But I still wanted to mention it to you, since it is quite important in regards to this discussion. Uh, just to give you an example, well, as I said earlier, um, if land value taxes becomes a problem for local farmers, then they can simply just raise the price on food because the demand for food is inelastic. But that's only half a truth because then they could go out of business because farmers in neighboring countries might suddenly be able to outbid them. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that Yes, if we increase land value taxes, then it becomes more expensive to own land in our country and less expensive to own it in other countries. So that's a disadvantage for local farmers. However, there's also advantages because we have a lower income tax. So in our countries, farmers don't need to charge so much for their food because they are able to keep a larger part of their profit. So many factors go into this and I just wanted to mention it to you since it is also quite important for this discussion. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more content on land value taxes and on other economic topics, then be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you have any other questions or ideas for topics that you want us to cover, then let us know in the comment section down below.